we've always had so many ideas that, you know, like, well, we can't do this because of these restrictions or we can't do that. So we were just kind of like, dude, let's just do this thing without any restrictions. (laughs) What's up, guys? Welcome back to the workshop. I am stoked because I've got two guys that probably don't need any introduction here. We've got Zach and Jamie from Zach in the Wild. Uh, If you love knives, you've seen these guys blade hq they've got their own channel thing going now doing zach in the wild and uh man i'm just stoked to have you guys here i'm a fan um been looking forward to have you guys come by WorkSharp. um you guys have been working with us but i wanted to get you sat down ask you a few questions about how you got the channel going get to know you guys a little bit better maybe a little behind the scenes get to know you guys in a way that maybe you haven't been interviewed before so dude that sounds great we're stoked to be here so thanks for coming man um i wanted to start with how'd you guys get Zach in the Wild going? Like, just tell us a little bit about the backstory there. I think a lot of people are probably wondering that. So, yeah, 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 for sure. So, um, yeah, so when we were at our last gig, right, um, we had kind of like grown this YouTube channel. It had already had a lot of work done to it. Yeah. So, we'd kind of grown this YouTube channel from like 150,000 ish to like 500,000 subs, right? Which is like super proud of that, right? Yeah. But I realized, well, while I was still working there, I realized I was like, oh, like, uh, I don't know anything about YouTube from like zero to 100,000, right? Like, I'd like to, to learn that right and the way that i learn things i just jump in right like i want to learn about podcasting so i started a podcast with me and my friend for six months just to learn podcasting yeah. right and uh i mean some people listened, some people didn't didn't really matter it was about movie stuff um so i started this channel and i was like cool i'll bring some people along on some of my more mild adventures right mm-hmm. and uh just kind of like poked at it for a while and uh then me and jamie ended up in like ended up in another place we were like shooting like supercars and like going on, you know, Harley Davidson rides and shooting for Harley Davidson corporate and Harley Davidson dealerships. And it was fun. It was a lot of fun. (laughs) And, uh, and we were looking at it and, uh, we loved telling stories and we were looking at the channel. We're like, dude, people are like watching. Like I was only releasing a video every couple of months. We're like, people are kind of watching this. And we're like, dude, it could be fun to like jump back into YouTube full time and like do something. So it was like, I don't know, probably May or yeah, that was funny because that, that conversation of like, hey, we should do something with this channel happened in a Harley Davidson like van sprinter thing that we just got back from Idaho. <laughs> and, right. and I was like, hey, you know that YouTube thing that you were doing? We should like maybe get that going or something. Yeah, so, yeah that's hilarious. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So so we kind of turned the thing on, uh, started making some videos and uh, people tuned in, which yeah. was super rad. And uh so it was about six, seven months, and we uh, about, uh, that was almost a year ago, and we went full time when that happened. Nice. So, so it's kind yeah. of Jamie's idea. Sounds like yeah, no, yeah, it was really Jamie that was like, dude, let's really poke at this thing. Because before that, I was just shooting some adventure stuff on GoPros, okay. you know, and and just doing my simple edits on and some music, and I was having a good time, yeah. you know, and people seemed to enjoy it. Um, but then when me and Jamie decided to pair up, then we got yeah. Jamie's like, you know, wizardry to make yep. it look is amazing. Right. Right. Like, yeah, I mean, there's definitely the genesis of the channel, which obviously Zach started. Yeah. I was just kind of like, Hey, I think you have a good thing going here. Uh, like, would you mind if I came on as a partner and, and really, really take it to the next level? Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 That's awesome. And man, has it been a commitment? It seems like you guys have been on a whirlwind of just, Oh dude, he has been on the road. Yeah. I mean, just in the last like month we've been, you know, we've been to like, We've been to Montana. We've been, I mean, this trip alone, we're hitting six states. Just this trip we're on right now. And you just got done with one similar, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and, then, and, then we were, and then we were in Italy for two weeks. And then we were, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of fun stuff coming on that. So, <laughs> yeah, just looking forward to that. So, yeah. So, uh, I don't know if it's the best way to do it, but we're having a good time. <laughs> that, was, that was probably my next question. It's like, I guess, still enjoying being on the road the way you are. I mean, yeah. It's been, yeah. you don't do anything halfway. And I think that's no. And no secret to anyone that's watching this. Like, you guys fully commit to what you're doing and, I guess one of the questions I have, and you shared a little bit about this just in conversation, but like, where does that come from? Like that drive that you have to just jump into something like this? Cause it's a commitment and the way you guys yeah. are going about this, you got family, you got things that you're, you know, leaving behind to get this done and committing to this the way you are. So for sure. I think we probably have a both, both have a different answer, I, but I know that we both have a similar kind of like ethos at least on mm-hmm. how we got to that point. So for me growing up, I grew up, uh, I mean, I was like the first person in my family to go to college. So like I grew up super blue collar, just like cowboys and truck drivers, literally like cowboys and truck drivers, like my whole forever, forever. <laughs> right. Like, right. And uh, I mean, one side of the family, they were truck drivers before there were trucks. It was literally wagons and horses and they were, you know, pulling freight across, yep. across Utah, Nevada. Blue collars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And so uh, growing up with that, it was just always like you do the best you can. Right. You always give 100 percent. Now, you know, one day, 100 percent might be 100 percent. One day, 100% might be 70%, but you're still giving it, Give it your all. everything you can. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I 
I think I was like 10 or 11 when I started pouring concrete with my dad. And, uh, you know, at that time you're just cleaning stakes and knocking off forms with hammers. And then, you know, I started really pouring probably when I was about 11, 12. Wow. Um, and yeah, that's just, that's, it's really like my mom and dad were just hard, hard workers yeah. and they always did their best. So for me, that's where it comes from. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. yeah. I think for, I think for Jamie, he just can't help but like pay attention to details and like just nail in on like the really specific important stuff. Yeah. 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 No, I think it's like, it was definitely an opportunity to kind of branch off and do, I guess our own thing. Um, but you know, my own thing too, mm -hmm. about like, you're at a place doing, making content and doing things for other people. And I was just like, man, it'd be really, really nice if I could do this for me and for us. Right. So, and then being involved in a community that I've learned to really love over the past, you know, probably four years before we started this thing. Yeah. So I don't know that was, that was kind of uh, the genesis for me of just like, Hey, I would love to still be involved in this community yeah. and do a thing for myself. That's awesome. And when you said the community, EDC night community yeah. is kind of what yeah. you're referring to there. Well, and, and, and on that note, like we've always had so many ideas that, you know, like, well, we can't do this because yeah. of these restrictions or we can't do that. Right. So we were just kind of like, dude, let's just do this thing without any restrictions. <laughs> Italy, right? Like, yeah. Italy yeah. was a thing that we've been wanting to do for years. years yep. And we finally actually got to sit down and do it. Nice. Which is cool. That's yeah. awesome. So more on that coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can't wait. Um, that's awesome. And you shared a little bit about your past a little bit. I'm kind of curious about both of you guys. It sounds like you, when you describe your childhood, you think of like, oh, he lived out in the country. You grew up in Vegas. Like yep. you shared a little bit about that, but I think that's something like a lot of people would be curious to hear. Like, it's like you live like two very different childhoods in two different areas that like, exactly. yeah, I, I think people would love to hear about that a little bit. Yeah. It's, uh, we were talking about this before. It's kind of one of those things like you don't realize that the way you grew up or the way you're growing up is different until you meet like more people. Right. So it wasn't until I was probably like 16, 17, like in that range. And I really started traveling and I was doing a lot of hitchhiking and a lot of train hopping at that age. And, uh, and you start to meet a lot of people and you end up in different towns and you realize you're like, Oh, the way that I was raised was kind of a little, maybe a little different. There's plenty of people probably that way as well, sure. but I haven't bumped into a lot of them. So yeah. So during the, during like the school year, I would be, I'd be in Las Vegas. Um, and we're talking like Maryland and Tropicana. Like if anybody knows Las Vegas, like we're talking like the hood, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there were literally drive-by shootings on my street. There were like multiple drug busts on my street. Like it was a, it was a rough neighborhood, you yeah. know? Um, so I like grew up very like inner city and like, I grew up without a, oh, I grew up without a, um, curfew. So my dad's philosophy was literally like, if you live to be 18, I guess you're going to make it. You know what I mean? Here. You can make it anywhere. Yeah. So yeah. like I was, li I, my house was like a mile and a half from the strip. So I'd go out on the strip at like, you know, I'd just be out on the strip until like 2 AM when I was like, you know, 12, 13, 14, like, <laughs> Not a place for kids. No. But that's where I was, you know. Especially when you were a kid. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Vegas it was way now. different. It's not yeah. like it was back then. Yeah, no, it was definitely <laughs> different even. So anyway, so I had the I had this like really weird kind of like very like uh, Vegas, very city experience during that those parts of the year. But then when I had my summer breaks or my spring breaks, we were out in the country. Like, okay. I was, I was, you know, we were at the pig farm. We were at the hay farm. I was rounding up cattle. Like, uh, you know, that's what I did the other times that I wasn't, uh, you know, I was on the freight line. I'd, I'd go help on the freight line yeah. with the trucking business. And uh, so, yeah, I think it gave me like a cool, like a cool experience of, I got kind of both as a kid yeah. and I got them in both pretty good like dosages. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. kind of fun. Nice. Yeah, yeah. But Jamie, I think Jamie had it better because Jamie just, Jamie was just in the sticks the whole time. Oh. So like he just, it was quiet and nice for him. <laughs> you know? I think I grew up in a much more kid friendly environment than yeah. Jack did, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm from northern minnesota like rural northern minnesota so like my hometown which i didn't even live in town i lived like eight miles out of town but my hometown was eight thousand people or, or something like that so uh, we didn't have a walmart until i was 15 or 16 or something like that that that, that, that honestly was the <laughs> yeah. big thing uh, I bet everybody was, the, was there everybody was yes. there for opening day it was like the thing in town but yeah i grew up uh, outside of that on a little on 10 acres and I was in the woods and yeah. fishing and doing all that stuff. So, um, eventually I was like, you know, I'm kind of sick of living in flatland. I don't need to get out West or something. So <laughs> ended up coming out to Utah in 2016. You got but... some big mountains <laughs> yeah. from yeah. nothing to, to that, to the real deal. There's, I mean, there's obviously a lot of stuff in between that sure. too. It was like, I started my 
working career as a paramedic and realized I didn't really like that. So I went back to school for filmmaking and so I was making like little movies and stuff when I was in my teen years and I was like, oh, maybe I could do that. And then ended up getting a job out here and yeah, the rest is, I guess, history when it comes to Utah, but. Picturing Jamie in film school is like one of my favorite things. Oh man. Because Jamie's like, you know, he's he's a very practical guy, right? Like in the best way. And like so much of film school is like, you know, people that want to make art, right? So Jamie's like, dude, I want to make National Geographic documentaries, you know, and all these kids are like, but think about pain. And like, <laughs> I just, yeah. he tells me stories from that time period. I'm like, oh my gosh, Jamie in art school is like my favorite idea. Like, <laughs> no, I basically, I was like, y'all are weird. I found the one, I found the one guy that wasn't weird. His name was Caleb. Uh, I love that guy. Um, and basically like latched onto him. Yep. I was like, we're going to make documentaries. <laughs> And it, and it turned out we ended up like making, we got like awards for our documentary, wow. our final project and, and all that stuff. So it, it ended up turning out good. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right off. So I hear Zach's, you know, I think we kind of all know Zach likes being on the road the way he does. I've never yeah. heard like your take on that. Like, cause they, Zach shared his story on his channel about why he likes being on the road. He likes sleeping and rest stops and enjoys that lifestyle. I'll sleep behind a dumpster. True for you too. <laughs> <laughs> um, that that wasn't a thing like <laughs> that's Zach's thing for sure I think I've learned to work within that lifestyle yeah uh, I'll I'll definitely suffer for projects but I d I don't think for fun for me I'm going out and sleeping outside of truck stops and behind dumpsters and in concrete pipes and stuff uh, I do like to get out uh, away from people I don't I think that's a common factor for both of us but not quite to that extent, right. I don't think. But we we gotta make it work. Like oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm no secret to no sleep and getting things done. Yeah, Jamie. Jamie's like Jamie's got all of the right makings, right? To mm -hmm. to like make it work. But it's definitely, I definitely try, especially when traveling together. I try to be considerate and not be like, dude, we can just drive two days straight. It's fine. Like we can totally do that. And then, and then when we get there, we can just sleep in a park. It's fine. Like. <laughs> Sometimes but, but, we sleep in the car. Sometimes, sometimes we, we do. sleep in hotels. Sometimes yeah. we sleep in the car. Like yeah. sometimes we're traveling. We're like, it's just more convenient to sleep in the car. Yeah. So like Jamie's awesome. And, and like for sure, like that's a type of adventure, but like, dude, Jamie's like up in the mountains, like backpacking. I mean, he boundary waters up where he came from. He's out on canoes for like days at a time. Like nice. he's no, he's, 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 uh, he's no, uh, it's, it's no mystery to him about adventure. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's probably why it works is. It's not that much different. It's just, you know, you have to, it's a little bit of a different vibe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as much as you guys are putting into this thing right now, as far as like how much you're on the work road, like it's almost, it's almost like a marriage you guys have, like, like okay. having to like make that work. And, you know, you talk about like the things you do differently when you have Jamie with you, you didn't drive the van. So <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Sometimes yes. you gotta like just draw a line. Yep. 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 That's, that's one of them. Yep. I think we're both pretty good uh, communicators, or at minimum, I think we're both fairly direct communicators, mm -hmm. and and that, that type of communication works for both of us. I think that's how we can how we are able to make those like types of situations yeah. work for the most part. It's it's, yeah. it's got to be stressful. It's got to be hard. I mean, you guys are going on nonstop, but yeah. Um, and I guess there's part of me that just goes like, "Is it worth it so far? Are you guys loving it? Are you enjoying right. it?" Yeah. No, I think I think we're I think that we're I don't want to speak for both of us. I know I'm enjoying it. Um, and like definitely for me because of how much effort we're putting in right now, for me, it's actually hard to like go have like kind of the pure, like, what do you call them? Like Zach escapes or whatever that like, okay. that I'm used to because like what now all of my time is that yeah. thing. Right. So it's nice to get it in when I can. Yeah. But yeah. No, I like, I think I'm, I'm having a, I'm having a great time and uh, we're just grateful for all the support we're seeing. And, and uh, yeah, we got a lot of cool stuff in the works. Yeah. You know? I'm so, enjoying it. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, this is, from my perspective, I, I appreciate it. it. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> you enough okay over there, Jamie? Is it, is it going good for you too? Or? Yeah, like I think with any business venture, because that's I guess ultimately what this is. Yeah. There's some passion. There's obviously some passion behind everything that we do. Mm -hmm. But it also is a business venture with any new business venture. Like there's stresses that come with that. Like I've worked the most I've ever worked in my life the past two years, yeah. right? Yeah. In order to get this thing off the ground. But there's definitely the fulfillment aspects that comes with this type of thing that I think I, I would say for both of us that have yeah. been that have been great. Cool. Well, that's I mean, just speaking about that, I like, speak on that a little more. When uh, when we fighted, decided to go full time on this, I had just bought a house like six months before, and the family that I bought the house from, they uh, I bought it in the winter time, 
And uh, I was going to make them move out in the wintertime because they were going to build their own thing. And he's like, yeah, I've got this fifth wheel we can stay. I'm like, no, no, dude, just stay in the house. I'll move it. You know, so so like uh, basically when all of this is going on, that's when we're like, yeah, let's also start a business. So I'm in the middle of this like like basically gutting this house remodel. Jeez. That's because that's just, I just wanted to do it my way. Right. And then so, uh, and then we had to build Jamie a house. So I turned the garage into an apartment for Jamie. And so for a few months, we were kind of joking that we were unemployed and homeless. <laughs> <laughs> Because there was a time where there was one bathroom and two bedrooms that were half livable, and that's where all of us were staying. Jeez. Just between those spaces while we were doing everything. It's just not just you two. Your wife, kids, my, like yeah, my, my wife and my daughter as well. well. Jeez, man. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> Great times. Great times. <laughs> we got Jimmy's apartment done as fast as we could so yep. we could have his own space. Yep. Nice. <laughs> nice. And then at the same time, getting getting everything off the ground and getting it going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of I mean, all... All the adventures you guys have been on, is there one that like sticks out for you? Like obviously probably Italy's on the mind, but like yeah. you guys are on the road. I just wonder if there's any like put you on the spot here, but like any funny stories you can think of that like stick out that maybe haven't made the camera or I don't know, just something to share with the audience that's like maybe a little more behind the scenes about like when we were here, this is something that funny that happened. Oh yeah. I didn't even think about that before we came. I should have. Yeah. Um Yes, yeah, there's a few just like random bits and bobs. Especially at the beginning, like yeah. the Nebraska, actually for you guys. Yeah, but, hey, all right. Yeah. <laughs> the Nebraska That's the one that trip was in my head. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, and like the Gambler yeah. Five Hundred and all yep. the and all those, right? There's yep. I don't know if there was a specific like moment in those, but I think all of those were kind of special because you're starting a new thing and you're not sure if it's gonna work and you're just trying new stuff and throwing stuff at the wall to make sure it's gonna or to try and see if it's gonna stick, right? Yep. And you're going and having all these weird adventures, and uh, I think kind of that spirit of the initial push is kind of is kind of interesting yeah yeah for sure yeah there's there's definitely like i mean yeah we put down a lot of miles together so it's definitely like i mean on the way here just as a small example right we we were like coming through the mountains you know and it was like really dark and we just started like joking about you know seeing a sasquatch because there's like all these big trees <laughs> right? and we just kept talking like we were just like making all these stupid jokes and that's really what a lot of like doesn't make it on the cameras because i'm in front of a camera a lot right uh for better or for worse and uh but there's a lot like goes on between me and jamie oh, sure. like a bunch of inside jokes and just fun that we have along we had that back and forth that i think you know people saw in blaze q that chemistry and yep. things like that yep. like you know so there's probably people that are like i kind of miss that we get a little bit of your back and forth when jamie's behind the camera yeah 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 and and, and we get jamie on front of the oh, camera yeah, from time yeah, to time yeah. you know yeah yeah but i think that's probably like out of everything, that's probably the stuff that really doesn't make it is, is like, yeah, when we're tripping and it, it's just those types of things, yeah. right? But then, you know, on the flip side of that, we we uh, we drove directly here from Montana. It was a 16-hour drive that day, just one one block. Um, and, uh, you know, probably the first, we left Montana around 4.35 a.m. Probably like the first like four or five hours of that trip, we didn't even talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like had some music on and we're just driving through the dark, yep. you know? like. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> it brings like that. I, I keep saying married, but just like that relationship with someone where it's like, we don't need to talk. Like, we're, yeah. we're, we know each other well enough. We're yeah. just on the road. Let's yeah. get through this. Yeah. Sometimes you're tired. It's just like, a, like we've been talking for a while. So yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, we're, we're good for a little while. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right on. Um, I'm curious, like, and you guys, you know, share what you want to share here, but like, what what's next? What are you guys excited about? What's coming down the pipe that. Yeah. Um, Zach in the wild. I mean, that's a hard thing because we didn't co co collaborate beforehand on what we can say and can't say. Okay. But uh, I mean, we've got we've got some. Uh, I mean, we have a really big documentary coming out of Italy. Um, if anybody saw the, uh, we've done the similar thing in Germany mm -hmm. a few years back with Boker. Uh, we're doing something similar, but I think this is even bigger scaled than oh. the Germany piece. Uh, Italy is such an interesting Maniago specifically. Maniago is such an interesting thing because they have been making knives for the world since at least the 1930s and uh nobody knows like nobody knows that they like almost for sure like you probably have owned a knife that was designed in italy or sorry that was made in italy and you may not even know that it was made in italy hmm. right like yeah. um and so uh it's really exciting to see and like learn the history there and like how far it goes and like the fact that basically every switchblade that came in the united states before the switchblade act uh literally was made in maniago even if it said a different city it was contracted by that city in Italy, 
Maniago made it and then sent it to that city and then that city sent it to these states. Wow. So like it's uh they've got a really rich history there. And it's uh it's so yeah, that's probably one of the biggest things that we have coming right now. And did you know that going into that as part of like when Jamie said earlier, like I've been wanting to get to Italy for a while. Was that kind of part of that? Yes Is and no. It? So I, I do a ton of research on projects, right? So like with Italy, for example, like when I do a project that size, I want to make sure I literally know everything. Mm -hmm. Um so we even talked to some historians that were like in Maniago, Italian historians that focus on Maniago that were like, didn't quite know the answer to my questions. Wow. And we were with Igor from MKM, like just the best dude in the world. And even he was like, he was like, it was cool to see him impressed about the level of research that we had done. Nice. But like, I went all the way back to like, okay, cool. Like when did like iron come to the Maniago Valley? Jeez. <laughs> right. So I'm like, like, you know, like. 900 years you know bc right like i'm looking at this stuff that's how far back i i, I trace things because i just wanted to make sure we can make a good story yeah. um but the the trick with shoots like that is is you really don't know till you get there yeah. right and so much of it was in italian and i had a buddy that was helping me like translate italian text and obviously google can help you um but so much of it you don't know till you get there and that, that's the same thing that happened we had even with the germany shoot we did all this research and the communication there like Everybody speaks really good English and there's no, there's no like real communication barriers. And Boker, they know their history really well because it's kind of been the same thing. Maniago is like a whole city full of hundreds of makers, right? Yeah. So it's like a little bit different doing research. So, um, but even with Boker, we had an idea what we we're going to do. We showed up and uh, we like instantly changed what we were doing. <laughs> like the first day of the shoot. Part of it. Maniago was very yeah. similar. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, that's just the nature of documentaries, right? Yeah. Is you have some bones that you think you can execute right but once you get there you're learning so much new stuff yep. that you're constantly shifting things around and the story evolves as you're shooting it essentially mm -hmm. yeah. um but yeah I'm, i mean other big, big news like we've got some we've got some designs that we're working on nice. some knife designs nice. we're working on so that'll hopefully soonish and then um we've got some interesting website stuff okay going on I don't know how much more I can say about that. Fair enough. Oh, <laughs> I won't press. Keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> I'm curious. You guys make a lot of fun content. I love how you tell stories. And part of the game is just trying to work that YouTube algorithm, like trying to figure out what hits, what doesn't. And it probably kind of dictates the projects you do, I would imagine, because I'm hearing documentary and like it's a little different from what you guys you know, typically yeah. would do. Yeah. But also sounds like it's a passion space for Jamie and probably yourself as oh, yeah. well because, you know, the research you did on it. How much do you feel like you're doing that you want to do and how much do you feel like you have to balance that out with like what is the what does the algorithm want when I'm when I'm making stuff? Yeah, I uh it's it's an interesting thing. Um and I don't know like how many people watching are like creators or have created on the, on any ecosystem so that can understand kind of this is but like you can have subscribers but subscribers aren't really going to dictate who sees your stuff, right? Yeah. It's really going to be, and this is go TikTok, Instagram. I don't care what platform you're on, right? We we're up primarily on YouTube, right? Um, it's going to be the algorithm that dictates who sees what. So definitely, um, we we do our best to research what is important and what the algorithm's pushing and all of that. But we do a very healthy balance of like what we're interested in and what the community wants to see. Yeah. So we've seen, we've seen it, like, it's just SEO, right? Like search right. engine optimization, right? Like it's, it's the way that you help any website does it. Any, any creator does it right. Um, we've seen SEO opportunities that we didn't pursue because yeah. we're like, no, this isn't authentic to what we do. Yeah. And I would say out of like algorithms, audience, all of that, our number one guiding principle is like to be authentic. Yeah. So, I mean, all of the years that we've been on camera and I was, we were just talking about this the other day because we had some opportunities that, we, had, we, we, we were kind of talking around some opportunities um, with, with a good friend of ours. And, and they were like, well, you don't have to really believe in this thing to do this thing. And I was like, no, 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 I definitely do. <laughs> like, that's, how like, that's how you guys are probably wired. Yeah, like, yeah, like, all, like all of my experience, all the, all the I mean, hundreds of videos that, that I've been on on YouTube in different capacities. I never once said anything that I didn't mean, yeah. right? Or that I didn't back or I couldn't back up or that wasn't authentic and true. Mm -hmm. And I would say that's probably more than algorithms and, and more than anything else. That's probably like our number one thing yeah. is just to be authentic. And like, honestly, if us being authentic, correct me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> at least for me, if us, us being authentic ever became to the point where we couldn't make this thing go, yeah. it's just done. Just doesn't go. Yeah, just, just shutter it and it's all gonna, good because yeah. there's no point in doing it if it's not real. Yeah, you're not I might advise that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it's a tough thing. And it's one of those things too, like 
you don't want to be the guy that asks for likes and subscribes all the time. But it's also like when we're talking about the algorithms, what drives the algorithm? Part so of like the game. You guys see something you like that he's making, make sure you do that because like that's how it gets to where it says, oh, people like this thing that you're making instead of just, you know, they're all great episodes. But like when you get passion projects and you try and diversify, sometimes YouTube says no. It's yep. just, you're supposed to be doing nothing but tool reviews. And that's all we want to see from you. And if you want to tell us about something in Italy, you know, we're not going to push it to the masses the way it yeah. would. So yeah, it's, it's a tough game to play, but um, I, I'm stoked the way you guys are doing it. And I think you're in the right spot. And it doesn't surprise me at all. And I'm sure anyone that's watching this isn't surprised to hear that like, if it ever becomes something that you guys aren't enjoying anymore, you'll hang it up. And yeah, so yeah. thanks thanks for making the content you guys are making. I, I, I sure enjoy it, that's for sure. Dude, yeah, it means yeah, a ton. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> all right, guys, we're gonna do a little Q and A with Josh. He's off camera over here. He's got some questions that have been coming in from the audience. Uh, Josh, what do you got over there? Let's hit up some audience questions first. Um, you guys have any travel plans out like East, uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, and then any blade collabs coming? So travel plans, uh, possibly. We're working on, uh, I can't give too much away. When aren't you traveling? Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that bad, bad, I guess back East, right? Um, we're, we're working on some stuff that is going to put us in the Mississippi area, I'm pretty sure. So um we might end up that that way uh we'll see cool we're kind of finalizing some some ideation on that but yeah and then there's potential like blade show plans so yeah know, georgia ish but yeah. Yeah, yeah we usually don't end up getting too far outside of that but yeah no you guys will be a blade west uh blade yeah oh yeah yeah we'll be yeah. a blade west yeah because that's our backyard yep. yeah all day um and then yeah blade cl collabs uh as far as collaborations you know we had our axial collab collaboration yep, right here. um which you Picked up and didn't let me know, but I very <laughs> grateful when I saw here. Super rad. Yep. We, got um, it. we are we are working on some more stuff like that. We're actually working on like some design stuff, like some kind of original design stuff as well. Right on. So yeah. Yeah. Maybe some more stuff with Axial. Yep. Fingers crossed. I really <laughs> like the guys over at Axial, so cool. they make a darn good knife. And uh, how have you liked this knife since now that it's not new anymore? What, what do you think? Oh yeah, still. I mean, well, first off, it's special because that's our first ever collaboration. Okay. So it's special for that reason. Yep. But again, going back to authentic, right? Like, I wouldn't be interested in doing a collaboration with somebody that I wasn't 100% right. in with. You know what yep. I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. I've uh, been a big fan of it. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Yep. What else you got, Josh? What's the, the bacon of knife steel? <laughs> that's for each of you okay i'm not sure uh, what the actual definition of bacon is yeah yeah jamie you go first i mean how i interpret bacon is like you know tasty yummy which is like Everybody the new it. yeah the new it's magna cut right yep. like i think that's for me the pretty clear answer it's yep. like that's the new hotness so i'm yep. gonna i'm gonna interpret bacon that way i'm gonna let you go oh, i get to go too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Man, I think of bacon as like the long standing. Everybody enjoys it. I thought I go M three ninety. M three ninety. Yeah, it's cool. just a good steal. You, no one's sad about having M three ninety on their knife. Like true. I, I think that'd be a good one. True. Perfect. Um, I'm gonna do the class exact thing and answer with two answers. Cause you have to qualify it, right? I'm a philosophy guy. <laughs> so <laughs> without qualifiers, I'm actually gonna answer on both ends of the spectrum. So I think Magna Cut for what is currently the bacon, yep. right? But I think that bacon, there's also something about bacon that's like long standing, enjoyable. Dude, I know that people kind of rag on it, but I'm a D2 guy. Oh. Like, if we're talking about just like, and the reason, the other reason I'm a D2 guy is not just because of, uh, I like the way it performs, right? But I'm a D2 guy because it's super affordable. Yeah. Right? Like, yep. you can get like a, now you can get like a $40 knife, you know, $30 knife with D2. And if it's done right, it's going to be a great knife. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's to me, that's just a real like user steal. Yeah. You, know? Know? you get into the exotic steals and they get a little bit uh, out of price range. Yeah. Bacon, everybody yeah. can have. So why not? D2's that's that's, kind of that's what I'm thinking, yeah. right? That's kind of how I feel about it. So yep. D2. Yeah. Bacon, not ribeye. No, there yeah. You know. Bacon, yep. not ribeye. Yep. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Did you guys know each other before Blade HQ? No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we did not. There's a, there's a great story behind that, but <laughs> first time I met Zach or first time I saw Zach, I was at my desk and I see out of the corner of my eye this guy walking by and he's got a button down shirt and a bow tie. And he goes into the room and interviews. I was like, huh, I wonder who that guy is. <laughs> and then a couple weeks later, he was sitting in a cube next to me. And the bow tie and long or bow tie and button down lasted, what, a couple weeks? A couple weeks. I mean, that obviously you can tell that story yeah. if you want to, but I'll tell it. Yeah, yeah I'm fine with that. <laughs> but yeah, that's how I met Zach. 
Yep. So, uh, you know, a lot, most of the time you see me, you're going to see me either in like a work shirt, right? Always a collar though. Mm-hmm. A work shirt or a Hawaiian shirt. Yep. It just depends on the season, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, but I had a, a long stint where I was, you know, going to college and I, I taught college and, and things like that. And I was a te- I taught high school. And, uh, when I did that, I had, you know, I'd wear slacks and a button up and I'd wear a tie or a bow tie and you know, the whole yep. thing. So when I started at uh, HQ, I was, I just started as a copywriter, right? Like pretty low, low on the totem pole. Um, but I showed up to, to win, right? Yeah. So I dressed the way that you win and I'm sitting at my desk and, uh, yeah, I knew I wasn't exactly along with everyone else because everybody else was showing up in t-shirts and sandals and whatever. Right. And, uh, and then one day it was, it was the owner of Baron Sun Knives. Uh, the owner of Baron Sun Knives came in. He was there for you know a meeting or whatever, right? And he came in and uh, and, he, and he looks. He gives me like one look, and I can't remember exactly what he said now, but it was basically like, "Who's that guy?" <laughs> like basically like, and I, it was just the way he, said, he wasn't trying. I don't. He's a nice guy. I'm not. I'm not ragging on him at all. But the way he said it, I realized it's like, this isn't the industry for this. <laughs> And so I, uh, I transitioned out of that and I, 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 you know, I mean, every Sunday, at least I still wear a tie and a white shirt and yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) If you haven't Google Zach Whitmore and it'll come up, like it came up for me. There's when you used to do the bicycle collective video and it's like, first I watched like, that doesn't look like Zach at all. And then you start hearing Zach speak. Oh, it's Zach. Yeah. It's it's, it's Zach. It's just, he's dressed a little differently. (laughs) Just just a little different. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a couple. There's a couple. Uh, there's some philosophy conferences I've presented at. Uh, there's a at my college. I was part of a, a forum thing. There's there's a couple of videos out there that aren't what you would expect. Yep, yep. Yeah, that Tell show kind of kind of the other half. Yep. <laughs> got a long story fast. I mean, scratch most of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah definitely. <laughs> what else you got there, there, Josh? So Zach sounds like Blade HQ is not the first like career type job. Sounds like that was more teaching. But Jamie, was that? Is Blade HQ one of the first career type jobs you had in this industry or? I guess it depends on how you would define career type jobs. I, I started off life uh, in emergency medicine. Like I was a paramedic for two years. I think we covered that earlier. Um, so you probably and, finished that. It was yeah. even like, I, I'm going to start this. And no, I, 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 I went to school for two years, uh, got my cert and worked as a field oh. paramedic for, for two years. And kind of about a year or so into that, I was just kind of like, Everybody said, you know, give it six months to a year and it gets better. And I was just like, it's not getting better. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I, I don't think this is for me. Uh, and ended up going back for, you know, to get my bachelor's in film, which is kind of, you know, how I ended up eventually getting to where I am today. So. And actually, HQ was not my first career. I'm actually a journeyman in two trades. So I have 10,000 hours of work in concrete and in carpentry. So, yeah, that was my first. That was my first career. Yeah, yeah. And- taught and yeah and then I, and then i taught school and then i ran pizza places and then i i ran a lot of bicycle places i started some nonprofits. uh i mean if you you name it i've probably have done it i just like to learn yeah. and i think one of the best ways to learn is through occupation it's one of the best ways to learn different people like i worked i worked at a drug rehab clinic for six months right yeah. and i like i was a night care person and dude you learn a lot about people doing that right like yeah. And I mean, it was just a great opportunity to help people too. But uh, yeah, no, I, I'm a big like learn through occupation guy. You got to work to eat, right? Yep. So you might as well learn something while you're working, right? So yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Where does this go in uh, in five years or 10 years? Or what does the long term oh, look like for, uh, you know, that might be the channel, but that might be both of you guys independently. Is there a dream out there that you're like one day, this is, this is what we'll be? Yeah. Or independently where I'll be. Yeah, that's a that's a long big question. There's also there's also a lot of stuff that involves what's going to happen. Stuff we're working, yeah, stuff we're working on that we're not going to that we're not quite ready to like tell yeah, people about yeah. right now. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like, how do we answer that without giving away some kind of what, some of the? Good, I, I yeah. think I think like we want to keep working uh, in this community because it's just amazing and yeah. we love being a part of it. Um, and we we want to offer some things that haven't been offered. We want to bring some stories and perceptions that haven't been told. I think that's probably, you know what I mean? I always joke, you'll know if I made it because, uh, you know, my mom will be taken care of and I'll be a sheep herder up in the mountains. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) That's like 30 years. So that's a long ways down the road. (laughs) Don't worry. (laughs) So to give you the most unsatisfactory answer ever. Yes. There you go. Okay, if you couldn't make content about that, I don't know if I'm, I'm really not that satisfied with that answer, but... <laughs> uh, 
if you couldn't make content about knives, what would you make content about? Are you looking at me first? Yeah, you first. I think there's there's probably a few answers in there. Um, I I cut my teeth on the like the good old fashioned adventure content back on old YouTube, right? I don't know if there's really, you know, an audience for that type of stuff, kind of with how things are going with short form and stuff getting shorter and that type of thing. But that's kind of the the stuff that I really got into, you know, when YouTube was first getting off the ground. And I'm also just really into uh, like cameras and self improvement stuff. So. I like that stuff as well. Yeah, I think for me, I uh, I just I think I'd like to tell like just s- like stories you'd never hear. Okay. Um, I'll give an example. Um, I'm not going to give the town away because I have my own plans. But uh, <laughs> there's this little town in I think it's South Dakota. I'm pretty sure not North Dakota. There's a little town in South Dakota, and there is a guy. I found it on Google Maps because that I just do that. I'll just like go around on Google Maps and look at things, right? Yep. And I was in South Dakota looking at Google Maps, and uh, there's this guy that has. Dude, he, like without exaggerating, he's got to have 500 cars, like 500 cars and they're all lined up. And I, I actually was like on a road trip and was able to detour a couple hours and drive out here to this town. The whole town's abandoned. It was probably a town of like five, 600 people. The whole town's abandoned except for this one guy. And he's bought basically the whole town. And he has like five or 600 cars and they're all lined up by like types and everything. And he has a bunch of boogie vans, which I'm like way into vintage vans. <laughs> And like he's got like tires and wheels and wiring harnesses and it's all organized. It's, it's like organized. One like dude. A... It's one dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I end up talking to uh, I end up talking to the the rest stop guy that's like in the other the real town up the road, right? I I called in because I was interested in this thing, and I was talking to him and it's like this guy like apparently like does uh, just road maintenance for the state, and I don't know he maybe inherited his money. I don't know what the story is with the guy. But like, I would love to like go to that guy's place and tell that story. Tell those unique stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About these, about people that like. <coughs> again, my people are blue collar people, right? And the reality of it is, is like blue collar people are like erased from so much stories. Yep. You know what I mean? On such a like real level, like the only real information we have about workers of the past and blue collar people of the past are what somebody who had a little more money was willing to write yeah. down about them. Yeah. It's not like a true perception of you know what I mean? Like. Yep. This is, a lot of those people didn't keep journals and like they weren't important enough to make history. Yep. So I would love to go around and capture that type of yep. stuff. So yeah, anyways. Yeah. Tell those stories. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on this. Um, if anyone hasn't already headed over to watch your channel, I encourage you to do so. Uh, these guys make awesome content and tell great stories, not just about knives, but tools and you find the heart of people's content in there too. Like, so I can't wait to see what's coming out from Italy. I know it's going to be great. Um, and just appreciate you guys just being real, um, sharing a little bit about yourselves, peeling back the curtain a little bit. I feel like we only scratched the surface, but hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it. And, uh, yeah, thanks guys. Much, much appreciated. Dude, thanks for having us out. It's, it's been a blast. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Right on.